Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey. You are here. What's going on? Thanks for checking us out. Uh, if you're new to the show, what's going on? Like I said, I'm Jersey. Welcome to the place. Take a look around. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully it doesn't suck too terribly much and you want to go back and watch some previous episodes. This is episode number 49. So we are coming up a couple weeks away from being one year for the weekly podcast. You have lots to catch up on. Please go back, check it out, comment, thumbs up, do all that fun stuff. We genuinely appreciate it. Uh, I also comment on every um, comment on YouTube. Um, so definitely, definitely do that. It would be awesome. Uh, if you are one of the cool kids, somebody who watches this show every single week, and you are somebody who always comments, always thumbs up and does all that, what's going on? It is because of you we get to do this show. So thank you, thank you, thank you for always watching and checking us out. And if you're listening, a huge thanks to you guys. Uh, iTunes, man. iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, all those platforms. You guys are killing it. I love that you guys are giving us reviews. And I love that you listen every single week. Hopefully you're out there making some money right now and checking out the show. Lastly, if you are one of the elite, if you are a cool kid, and you also buy your supplies through me. What's going on? Uh, really, I do want to genuinely thank you guys. Uh, it's been huge. You guys have really, really, really been awesome. A lot of people that even shoot me texts and say, hey, everything's in my cart. Can you put it in? Just making sure I get credit for it. Thank you. Genuinely, it is the reason I get to eat at night and in the morning and at lunch and probably in between also. So thank you very much for um, doing that. And if you want to order your supplies through me, or have any questions on supplies or anything supply or business or anything related, my number direct, 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Say what's up. Say you like the show, where you hate the show, where you're from, all that fun stuff. I'd love to hear from you. My email, josh at windowcleaningresource.com. Thank you guys for all the support on that side of things. Um, this week, shout-outs go to Eric. Giles, first and foremost, man, what's going on? I uh, really uh, appreciate you uh, always uh, commenting and everything else, watching the show. Eric uh, Minot, man, I'm probably mispronouncing your name, sorry. Uh, Dan Diekman uh, and uh, Andrew Barrick, even though you said last week the intro was too long. What's going on? Um, this week the intro is going to be shorter just because of you, Andrew. Just because of you. See? Complain. See what happens. Uh, this week's winner is Philip Gales. What's going on, Philip? You win. You win. You win a fifty dollars credit for a window cleaning resource and a free swag bag. That's the shirt, the pin, that is the uh, sticker pack that we have. Everything. So um, yeah, it's super, super, super awesome. Um, either way, I de genuinely appreciate you guys checking us out. If you want to win yourself, all you need to do is comment down below and, um, you're going to be a winner. If you comment down below, please share the show out, uh, iTunes, share the link. Uh, if you are on Facebook, share the link, comment down below on Facebook. We pick a random winner every single week. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have free tickets coming up for the huge convention, which I'm going to talk about. Again, not to upset Andrew, we're going to talk about it quickly, but uh, the huge convention, the biggest event of the year for window cleaning and pressure washing, is coming up August 23rd, 24th. It's in Atlanta this year. It's at the Atlanta Marriott Marquis. Go ahead, go to thehugeconvention.com, get your tickets now. The trade show has literally already sold out for vendors. Uh, they're opening up space again, I believe, trying to. It's just, it's huge. It's going to be awesome this year, like every single year. If you haven't gone, do it. It's the best thing you could possibly do for yourself in the year. Plus, you get to hang out. All the creators are going to be there, too, so you can say what's up to them. Uh, get some free high fives from me and uh, order some supplies if you are there. So, yeah, make sure to make it happen. Andrew, was that okay? Was that fast enough for you? <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So this week, we're talking about making more money. And this is a big one that I hear a lot. Uh, not that people ask it straightforward, because if you've noticed, whenever you're on the forums and every other groups, 
everybody makes a lot of money. It's kind of a, I don't want to say measuring contest, but there's a lot of um, everybody making lots of money. If you can see what that is. This time of year, too, we always joke around. All the giant checks you're going to start seeing uh, with everything crossed off. Uh, and, and people people like to brag this time of year because we're all cash rich. So it's awesome. High five to all you guys out there hustling and making it happen. But for everyone, even if you're out there making a ton of money, even if you're out there making, you know, getting your hustle on and uh, making a ton of money, you could always make more. You could always be more efficient, which means working less but making the same amount of money. You could be better than you are now. We all can be. And these, again, I don't know anything from anything. I just am some guy with a microphone. But these are some ideas that I have that I do every single year in my business. Now, real quick, I want to touch on something. I had somebody ask me just the other day. Um, so I'm in the process of selling the, my business. It's been in a buyout for a while. So um, whenever I say my employees, I'm really hands off um, now. So there's a lot of stuff that we do that uh, I don't really have the day to day as much anymore. So when I stutter like last week, I was going back and forth. That's why just want to let you guys know not to confuse anybody. But every single year I sit down and do this stuff just because the best ships are the most efficient ones, right? If you can be the most, I don't want to say dry or the leanest company, that's not necessarily because sometimes sometimes you pay more money for something when it's worth it, right? Like I'm willing to go and get uh, a, a new truck, or I should say a cap, we'll say caps. I really like ARE caps. I really like those. I will pay more for one of those than one that's by another one. Why? Because I like the quality. I like what I'm getting. I'll pay a little bit more. So you have to take that into account when talking about this. Maybe your, you know, fill in the blank is more than the other fill in the blank, but you really like it for whatever the benefit. That's awesome. Find somewhere else to make more money. And there's three ways, three ways that you can make more money. Really, this is it. Three ways. It's either by raising your prices, okay? It's either by lowering your costs, or it's becoming more efficient, meaning working faster, right? Those are really the three. If you have any other ideas out of those bases, go ahead and comment down below. But those three make up all of your company and how you make money. Now, everybody always says, that there's one way. Well, you know, do an add-on. You make more money that way. Okay, great. You're doing more service at that point. Um, that's a great, great, great way. But out of those three, each one has their kind of little bits. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's basically making more money um, by not just raising prices, but just making more money in general. We all want to. Yes, you can advertise. You know, again, getting more business. That's that's a given. But there's things you can do right now. And here is the list. And I want to start off with the kind of simple, quickest go-to. You want to make more money, raise your prices. That's what I'm going to go to. I'm going to start with raise your prices because people are terrified of raising prices. Now, every single year, the cost of everything around you goes up. Now, it may not be every single product, right? It may not be... Uh, fuel may be down right now from where it was last year, but everything is on the trajectory to go up. That's why cheeseburgers were 25 cents, uh, you know, 50 years ago. A gas was 25 cents 50 years ago. Whatever. Um, don't fact check that. Those are numbers out of my butt. But you see, everything goes up. Every cost goes up. So why shouldn't you? Now, I was just talking to a guy literally maybe a week ago about this exact thing, and he goes, I don't know why companies raise their prices that's so stupid to me if you did it last year for the same price can't you do it this year for the same price sure but in essence if you do that you're making less money this year than you did last year ah that doesn't make any sense i'm doing it for the same end and probably faster i know but costs of everything around you go up every cost of living everybody's heard that right cost of living happens every single year not if it's just Something you see instantly, but it is, if you look at a chart of the past, like I said, 50 to 100 years, the cost of everything has gone up. So your service needs to continue to go up. Now, 
there's two versions of the raise your prices there's existing customers which is the hardest i'll give you that and then there's the new customers which is a little bit easier we'll start with raising your prices existing customers this is the trickiest one for anybody to do because they have a moral dilemma about it like well i made really good money last year or man i'm making 50 75 100 bucks an hour i can't raise my prices well that's fine but why next year would you want to make less than you do this year Right. There's no reason. If you're if you're okay making the amount of money you're making right now, you're okay making that amount of money next year. My incremental raises for existing customers every single year is 2%. Now the cost of living is you've heard that kind of, you know, actual number can change and vary and all that fun stuff, but 2% is such a little number. It's such a little number that people understand it. You know, when you call, you get the prices in I always say the same thing. Somebody calls in, hey, Mrs. Jones, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Talking to them at the very end, go, okay, just so you know, uh, we do have our yearly 2% increase. It's uh, under the cost of living, but uh, that'll be tacked down, blah, blah, blah. It very, very easy. Oh, no, 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 not a problem. 2%. People do not freak out about 2%. And what that does is it keeps you relevant. Even if the cost of living is 3% and you're doing 2% every single year, what's happening is it's keeping you closer to the game. Now, the real hard part, the part that is almost impossible for your brain to wrap around is when you don't do increment, inter, excuse me, when you don't do incre, incremental, oh my gosh, I have not been drinking a lot <clears throat> yet today. No, I'm just kidding. Incremental increases. If you haven't done them, then what's going to have to happen is at one point you're going to have to raise it like 10% to stay relevant. Like, oh man. I've had jobs where I picked up in the very beginning. Before I started doing my raises, they were so bad. They were so bad. I had jobs where I was working two hours and like 45 minutes for like $100. It was like 99 bucks. And by that point, when I realized, when I sat everything down, because in the beginning, we, we all kind of hodgepodge it, right? We Everything is not as lean or perfect or attended to as we should. We're just figuring it all out, worrying about everything else, right? When I finally went to increase it, it was so dramatic to make it even close to what I needed to make that it was absolutely absurd. And I, I went to the people and I said, hey, listen, uh, it was one of my first jobs this particular one. I remember because this was the first real increase. And I went there in person. I said, listen, I apologize for this in advance, but we've done you guys for five years. I've never done an increase and we bid it way, way off in the very beginning. Um, we're going to need to do an increase and here's what the new price is. And I truly am sorry. It's way higher than it was before, but this is just to keep you relevant. And I completely understand if you want to check around and find somebody else, blah, blah, blah. They said, man, no. They said, that's more where your prices should be. He's like, we've just been skating by for five years on this half price deal. This has been great. Okay. People get it. They understand, especially in commercial um, they're really following that, you know, are you a dollar less? You're a dollar less. It's harder in commercial. I get it. But as a whole, switching those prices with a small increase every single year is best. Now, if your number was sexy at 199, it may not be sexy anymore at, you know, what, uh, two, oh, two, whatever, 10% or 2% over that increase. If that's what you want to do now, Again, if you have somebody who gives you a stink or says something or you just, you don't have to do it for everybody, but if you can do it for everybody, do it. A 2% increase helps you stay relevant. It helps you not lose money. It doesn't necessarily make you make more money. Um, with new customers, it's easier, right? I talk about this all the time. I do, again, if you guys have any questions on bids, shoot them over my way at josh at windowcleaningresource.com. I do a lot of this kind of, not even consultation stuff, but I do a lot of that kind of thing. Here's the thing. If you have a job that you're bidding and it's new and you were at $50 an hour, you're trying to make more money, you can increase where you bid. It's the same thing of your $199 special. $199 for 20 windows inside and out. That's a really, really common special, right? That's great in June, but what about May? What about when you're going crazy? People, you can't answer the phone quick enough. Do 249. Our special right now is 249. You know, pricing is exactly what you want. There is no, you are not wrong by changing your price up or down the fluctuate. Now, should you ever go down? No. 
you should not unless you're filling void space. So July, end of July, August, the hard parts, the dog days of summer. You can lower that anytime throughout the year. If somebody gives you a stink, they say, oh, 249 is a little bit too much. Say, well, you know, in August, it slows down for us. We could do your job August 3rd at 9, between 9 and 10 in the morning, and we could do it for $50 less if you can wait that long. If they really have a price issue, they go, oh, man, okay, great. You just filled up the dog days of summer uh, at a price where you're still happy making then, just not at the premium you're making in spring. You have so much new work coming in, in the spring, you can raise that. But overall, if you're doing five bucks a window right now, why not try six? This year, right now, try six. Tomorrow, from you listening to this podcast, tomorrow, raise your prices a buck a window. A buck a window. That's not a lot. One dollar a window, you raise your prices. Most homeowners are not finding out your price, so you're not you don't have to say, hey. Excuse me, sir. Um, I know you're a new customer, but yesterday we had, you know, ten bucks a window. Now we have eleven. I just want to let you know. You don't have to tell them that, right? But if you can raise it one dollar a window, say you're doing on a ten dollar a window. You raise it one dollar. You've raised it ten percent. Ten percent increase in all new work coming in. That's huge. That is a huge way to earn more money. Keep your prices up there, and you're still gonna find that sweet spot. Like I say. Stay in between the like 80 to 85% close rate. If you're higher than that, you're too low. If you're lower than that, you may be a little bit too high. Play with the numbers. Find out where your sweet spot is and, and push that. Always ride the cusp though. If you have $1 more, pull that dollar out. Because on a 20 window special, it may be only $20 on the bill. But over all of them, all of the new customers from here on out, you're going to have 2% increase on top of that throughout the time. Now, this type of thing when I'm talking about people are going to go oh you're, you're just a money hungry piece of garbage blah, blah send me the emails fine whatever people vent on me all the time and I'm okay with that but I'm going to tell you right now that's not the case the case is you want to have a healthy company you want to be able to have a nice truck nice equipment nice clothes nice apparel nice insurance nice all that stuff costs money if you don't have it you're a bucket bob you got garbage clothes crappy truck that breaks down all the time and equipment that doesn't work well it doesn't matter if you're the lowest one that's not fun for anybody they're paying for that so increasing where you can especially on new staying relevant price wise increasing your overall prices that is big another one on increasing prices is your minimum people overlook this a lot because they say well i have a lot of people with smaller houses i do too and i you know apologize to people and i say hey listen our truck minimum is 149. Um, I would love to do your job, and I could certainly do that for that price. Um, but uh, with that truck, uh, you know, is there anything we can do with your windows? Maybe add screen cleaning. You know, raising your minimum does not necessarily hurt you because some people out there know they have a little job, and they may call somebody else. There may be somebody else in your area that is able to service them. But I'm not going to get a crew set up in a truck, drive all the way across town to go to your house for $40. It just isn't going to happen. Why? Because I'm not going to make the money I need to make on $40. $149 gets us there. If you can't afford $149, I truly am sorry that I can't service you. That's not what our intention is. But our intention is to make money where we can. Okay? So raising your minimum to where it is that you still are able to help people but get them to that minimum. Again, if you go from $99 minimum to $149, you can help people find other services to get them to the $149. And maybe you'll lose some people on that. But you're going to be, again, making yourself a stronger company, leaner and more efficient in general because of the changes you're making. So that's another um, hard one. Uh, one that's really, really easy in this kind of uh, genre, I guess, of the new uh, customer pricing, is services. Listen, I went and did house washing. Now, this is back in Wisconsin. It's different than, uh, I'm in North Carolina now. Uh, pricing is obviously different there, but I said, hey, listen, my prices are too low there. I'm doubling my prices. I've talked about this before on the show. I doubled my prices one day. I just decided I'm going to try it for one week or day. I don't remember what it was. Nobody bad at night. Nobody bad at night, which told me I was way too wrong. So I doubled my prices. Now, I hate, hate, hate gutter cleaning. I hate gutter cleaning. And uh, I don't really want to do gutter cleaning. And I, I, it's just, it ruins everybody's day. You know, if you're an outside tech that's doing gutter cleaning, now you're going to stay an outside tech for the rest of the day because 
you're gonna smell like a squirrel dump you know that's what you're gonna smell like so uh i took gutter cleaning and i raised it 249 is our minimum on gutter cleaning it is what it is now my gutter cleaning the service that i didn't like that was not a fish i'm stepping over dollars to make pennies with gutter cleaning i've raised my prices on gutter cleaning the people who say yes which is still a huge high close rate i'm happier with that minimum raise your prices it's hard but especially on new people it's way way easier raising your prices that's the easy one how about lowering your costs that's the second way to make more money this one is one of my favorite ones to do why is because a whole year goes by or six months you usually do it six months uh, winter summer is usually what i do but however long it is you lose track of what's going on now every single year i will um check insurance rates i will check phone and internet rates i will check uh cell rates uh all those things all the main rates i'll check because there's always sales going on now no you shouldn't always jump between them again if you're talking about you know a dollar a month by switching everything it may not be worth it but here's the thing i have found multiple multiple times that six month period if i check my rates on things and i switch over my rates now i know I'm paying the least amount I can. And I may save 100 or 200 depending on how many bills you have every day. Different companies, different sizes, different bills. You may save $100 or $200 a month. Well, that doesn't sound like that much. In the realms. Yeah, that's $1,200 a year I'm going to save. Guess what? That's $100 or $200 in the winter when money is tight. Right? That's all year. That means now this year... I'm going to take in a more $1,200 to $2,400 more by changing nothing. If I don't even get an extra client, if I don't do any of the other steps, just by cutting costs, not even cutting them, just making sure I'm paying the lowest that I can for what I need. Again, lowest doesn't mean best. But if you're talking about here's my insurance coverage and here's my insurance coverage, the exact same thing. I don't get anything extra from going with this company, but I do with this company or vice versa. Maybe it's worth switching. That is a very, very uh, big and easy one to do. I like to do that also with internet. Internet is one of those things that I I know I'm always paying the lower amount. There's a lot of deals out there. And if you hit the company's right, right time, you can save some money. Uh, also, shop phones. If you have shops, you have so many more bills than anybody else. But, um, you know, shop phone, if you are running faxes, you'll, of course, want phone lines. If you have office phones, you'll want phone lines. Checking those rates, checking their promos. Even if you stay with the com same company, maybe you can save five bucks a month on something. It's definitely worth it because you're adding all this up together. You're trying to stay lean and efficient as a total company. But go through everything, all of your little facets, everything that's drawn out of your account every month, all of those pieces and kind of find where you can um, save you know money by maybe even pick up more services for less money uh, another big one that uh, i don't really recommend doing but once a year just to check is employment rates now i've talked about a bunch of times that i went through temp services that's what i use is a temp service they we bring on the employees run them through them it just saves you a whole lot of headache it's amazing uh so much better but here's the thing Unless you have a great relationship with the company, which I do, I have a rep that I was with. He left the company, I went with the rep. So I don't change those things, but I will check prices. I've saved 1% uh, twice, okay? That sounds stupid, 1%, that doesn't sound a lot. I'm saving 1%, so how that works, if you didn't know, is uh, an employment agency will take 38%, we'll say. So for every dollar you pay somebody, you're paying 38 cents, on top of that, to the other company, to the payroll service. 1% of 38, that's huge when you can take a percent off. That's talking about every dollar that every employee earns, you're saving 1% of. That's big time. And I stayed with the same exact company. I just said, hey, listen. I talked to Express. Uh, that was one of the payroll services. I said, they are at X amount. Can you match that? I go, yeah, no worries. You can do that. Sir. Perfect. Okay. Maybe that works for you. Employment costs are huge. But again, you have to understand the difference between what you're getting and what you're paying. Sometimes pay more, get more. That's fine. It's not all about the dollar. Please do not go out there and just be the cheapest. None of that works for any of us in this industry. You know that. 
None of us are the cheapest. So none of us necessarily know we want the cheapest. We're just talking apples to apples and what we get for that service. Um, one other one in, in, in lowering costs is the cost per gallon. Now here's is take it for what it is. Maybe it's a salesy, maybe it's not, but a cost of a gallon of water in DI to a cost in RODI. Now I've been talking to a lot of people. And again, if you're listening right now, you want to get into pure water sales, sales spiel alert. Uh, we do a consultation. So, uh, you go onto my uh, page on window cleaning resource, you click on a consultation, you pick the date, time, all that fun stuff. We talk about it. You get a hundred dollars off an RODI system. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that. But when people do that, there's a lot of it right now because we're cash rich. People are finding out, hey, I'm paying 55 cents a gallon for pure water with a DI. Okay, if we go over to an RODI, you're paying one to two cents a gallon. What? Every gallon of water that you're pumping through, you're saving 50 cents, 50 plus cents a gallon. That's mind blowing, right? Yeah, costs up front, but but the costs of it mean that you're paying. This is cost of doing business. You're dropping those costs. You're making more money. Now you're saving a lot of money and that water's not costing you as much. So look into it if it is something that you use. If you're using DI only, check check out RODI. Check out your TDS. Uh, check the numbers. Call me, text me, email me, whatever you want. I can pull the numbers for you too. Anyway, understand your costs and understand how to be the most efficient with your costs as you can. But our third and final way to make more money is efficiency. This is the one that is probably the, I don't want to say hardest. It's not hard. It's just the most time consuming portion of all three of these options for making more money. I say, well, of course, I'm the best window cleaner there is. I am absolutely the fastest and most machine like person ever. Oh, I'm so awesome. Well, okay, that's great, but do you think that maybe, maybe, even if you're working fast, there's a different technique, or there's a different way to do it, or there's a different tool to use, or there's a different uh, process, or there's a different uh, anything, anything in tools and the efficiency, just because you're the fastest around, and you're the fastest you possibly can be, what happens if you change the tool? What happens if you went from a fixed handle to a uh, pivot handle, or an accelerator, or pure water? What if you did that? What would happen to your epic speed that you have already and you had the different tool? Maybe there's something else. So what can you do to be more efficient? Of course, you know, there's the big one and that's training. Now, a lot of guys, especially at the huge convention, this is again, my favorite time of year. I'm going to talk about it all the time, Andrew, but <laughs> I love the huge convention. The huge convention, you're going to learn stuff, but there's training involved with that also. You'll learn some dumb little thing That'll make you $2,000 next year. But getting that training, bettering yourself and being more proficient, it's the same reason. Somebody who has an associate's degree goes back to school for a bachelor's. They work 10 years. They know everything. They go back to school for their master's, right? In the college world, there is no, the training is a training thing, right? There's always ongoing training. There's always training. Even the masters have ongoing training. Why aren't you getting some training? Not that you need it. I'm not saying you suck. I'm not. Maybe you do suck, but I'm not saying it, <laughs> right? But getting that training will help you become more efficient. If you're more efficient, you're making more money. Listen, the greatest thing about a service industry business that we are all in is that the only cost that we have, for the most part, is our time. So if I can work faster, I'm more efficient, I make more money. If I do a job, is instead of one hour, it takes me 30 minutes, I just doubled my hourly rate. I just doubled the amount of money I made. That's crazy. You know what you can't do that is if you buy a shirt for $5 and sell it for 10, right? If you buy a hamburger ingredients for $5 and sell it for 10. But in our industry, service industry, you can. What does a quarter size dollop of Dawn dish soap cost you? Nothing. It's time. So being faster is the key in this whole game, the efficiency game. Here again, take it with a grain of salt. I'm a salesman, I'm sorry. But equipment. Now, we just talked about equipment itself. What about these guys who say they hate water fed? They've never used water fed, but they go, you're not a real window cream yet. I can run laps around you. No, you can't. Oh, I can clean two windows to your one and your water fed. No, you can't. Okay, 
we're in a, a, a first time clean job that's a one story. Maybe we can work at the same speed. Well, you got set up. Okay. I got five minutes of setup teardown total combined. Okay, well, we're not talking about jobs like that. I'm talking about everything else. A two-story job. You cannot run circles around me with a water-fed pole. You can't. I'm sorry. You may be amazing at what you do, and I give you mad props and a virtual high-five, but you can't run laps around the guy with a water-fed. On a two-story or a three-story or doing drops, you cannot be faster or more efficient than somebody with water-fed. So maybe it's time to get into water-fed, right? I'm going to tell you a quick story. I had a job that we did for four years up to this point with a lift, and it was there was railings, and it was twice a year, um, and we didn't want to water feed through the railings, so we lifted it and did traditional on it. We had the water fed stuff, we just never tried it. One year, operations officer said to me, he says, we're, uh, we're not ordering a lift for that project. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? It's coming up. He goes, yeah, we're, we're not going to order a lift for that. We're going to water feed it. <sighs> okay, your, your funeral, I guess. They water fed that job and they cut a total of 16 man hours off that job and saved us a lift cost. So that one project, it we made a ton more money, a ton more money on that project because of it. So maybe it's time that you look into water feeding. Maybe it's time you look into the accelerator. Some guys don't like it. Some guys love it. Maybe you do a lot of pole work. Maybe it's time to look into a stingray. Maybe it's time to go from a, uh, a hybrid pole or a, a glass fiber pole, you know, like the lowest kind of quality poles, to something stiffer like a carbon fiber. Or heck, we're cash rich. Maybe you want a high mod, stiffest and lightest, right? If you want any of those, they make you work faster. Even switching composites, I'm telling you. If you have a floppy pole, you know when you're up and down, that pole goes up and down off the glass and it takes a lot longer. You can't get the translation, so you got to scrub a little bit more because every time you push that bow tape, go to a carbon fiber pole. It's stiffer. More translation happens when you push on the pole. It gets to the brush. It doesn't bounce off the, the window like you thought. Maybe you have a carbon fiber pole that's not the greatest carbon fiber pole you want to upgrade, right? All those things make you work more efficient, make you make more money per hour. You've just made more money by doing nothing, not getting new work. You're not uh, advertising. You're not spending money to do it. And the realm that you're not getting something, you're getting new equipment. Your new equipment is what is bringing you that way. So maybe something to think about. Definitely, definitely do that. And the last one I want to talk about, which is um, something that I personally found, is the number of people on a crew. So if you're running three people on a crew in residential, you're losing money. No, all three people are really good. No, that's, that's great. They probably are really good. Three people on a crew will lose money. We've done the tests. Maybe do the tests yourself. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. But if you run three people on a crew, you're going to lose money. Why? Because the efficiency isn't there. Three people now have to drive to a job site. Three people have to drive away from the job site. Three people now have to set up. All that lost time is on three people as compared to just those two. Two is very efficient. They can work off of each other. A third just gets in the way. Maybe it's time to check that. Maybe you're running two people on a route crew. You are losing money. I'm sorry. There's the most drive time out of any service that we do is route. And you have two people sitting in a truck. You're losing money money have two people in two separate trucks one person on a job at each time you will make more money i guarantee it so maybe it's time to look at the efficiency of your crew itself and maybe it's time to get your guys if you have employees maybe get them trained you know either way making more money does not necessarily have to constitute you spending a bunch of money on advertising to get more work getting more work is great grow or die you know sell or die always be selling all those fun cliches but there's a lot of other ways. So, so look at it. Look at your company. Make it run as smoothly, well-oiled, micro, you know, it. think about a watch, right? A Swiss watch has such small, small pieces. They work so flawlessly together. You could have all those moving parts in such a small package. That's where your business should be. So look at it. Go make some more money. That's the name of the game. That's what we're all doing this. None of us are doing this because of our love for windows. Yeah, we love doing windows because we get paid for them, right? Yeah. Anyway, I do want to bring up one more thing. Like I said before, yes, the consultation. I didn't talk about it in the beginning. You want a consultation, you're getting into pure water, hit me up, 862-312-2026. I can certainly do that for you. Like I said, take $100 off an ROI package. 
or 50 off a DI only package if you can go that route, soft water. Also, people, I'm going to give you a code right now. Don't go blabbing it on the video. This is for you to know. If you want any uh, equipment and you want a discount because you watch this show, I'll take 5% off your order. All you need to do is when you call me and sell me, or even if it's in your cart, all you need to say is, this order is epic. Or uh, anything with the word epic. Say, hey, this is epic. Or just say, hey, I'd like my 5% off, epic. Right? If you know that, you've watched the show. I appreciate you watching or listening. It truly means a lot to me, and I love when you guys order from me again, because that makes money, and that makes me feel even happier. So... Please do that. Again, my number, 862-312-2026. And for the love of God, share this stuff out. Um, I may be doing this for a second year, but I need to get some love on it. So do that, and uh, there you go. But thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And until next week, go out there and be epic.